Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and today I want to show you a cool trick that I use sometimes to layer up multiple software instrument tracks together with a uh, track stack. Uh, specifically, I'll be using a summing stack. We'll come back to that in just a moment. As well as using multiple different MIDI effects plugins to layer up different effects like uh, the chord trigger here or the arpeggiator. But before we get into this video, I want to let you know about my Logic Pro 10 103 course over at MacProVideo.com. It's a 29-part comprehensive course on MIDI recording and editing. In the course, I start with just the basics of MIDI, MIDI signal flow, events and messages, MIDI recording and editing techniques, quantization, and some advanced features as well. So if you're interested in learning pretty much everything there is to know about recording and editing MIDI and Logic, go check it out at MacProVideo.com. Okay, back to the tutorial. So I'm hesitant to call this like a multi-instrument or a multi-timbral instrument because technically that terminology means something else in Logic. I just consider this creating a multi-layered, multi-faceted instrument. And the cool thing about this is that when it's all said and done, I'll be able to basically just play one note at a time on my MIDI controller and trigger bass, trigger chords, an arpeggiator, and also some ambient sound design as well. So really, this is more of like a sound design um, trick that I use. Again, when this is all done, I'll be playing one note at a time. So one thing I want to pull up first is under Window, Show Keyboard. And I'm just pulling this up because I want you to see the actual notes that I'm playing. The key range I'm gonna use is between C2 and C3. And the idea I'm gonna be building is in the key of C minor. So I'll just be using the C minor scale between these two notes between within this one octave here. So the first instrument I have here is just a Steinway Grand. And just to sort of uh, expedite things so I don't end up with a 40 minute long video, um, I've sort of preloaded some presets. So on this uh, channel, I have just the Steinway Grand pulled up. I've also pulled up Space Designer as an effect. Let me just find sort of like a large hall preset. So go to halls, let's use the reflective hall. Let's see what that sounds like. Cool, I definitely want this to be ambient, so I'm gonna go with that. And then I have two effects, uh, MIDI effects plugins on my Steinway Grand track. I have the velocity processor as well as the chord trigger. So let me turn off the chord trigger for now. And the only thing I'm really doing with the velocity processor is I'm setting a threshold of around high 70s to more or less limit or really compress um, my velocities. I don't want my velocities on the piano to come really uh, come through as really loud. So I'm hitting the key as hard as I can. If I pull this up to 127. So you can see uh, it compresses the velocity. So I'll end up with softer velocities, even though I'm playing the key at the you know the loudest velocity I can hit it at, which is 127. So that's all that's doing. And after that, I have this chord trigger. Now the chord trigger, you can see, has a range of C2 to C3, and I have all these different chords stored in here. Just bypass Space Designer for a second there. So I've saved this as a preset up here called C minor big chords. So the way you can create your own set of chords is recall the default setting, go to multi mode, and then turn on learn mode. Then what you can do is click on a key and then assign a chord to that key. And then turn off learn mode. So now every single time I press C2 on the keyboard, I get that chord. Now, what I've done is I've gone through the entire C minor scale from C2 to C3 and assigned a chord to each one, and I've just saved that as a preset up here. And there we go. Okay, so now I've got my piano done. And again, this is allowing me to play just one note at a time and trigger an entire chord. Okay, so the next one down is an electric piano. It's pretty simple. What I'm using is the MIDI effects plugin called Transposer, and I'm going to transpose this up an octave or 12 semitones. So when I play C2 on the keyboard, I'm actually hearing C3. When I play C3, 
I'm actually hearing C4. Now, that paired with the electric piano probably doesn't sound that great. But I'm going to add some really, really heavy reverb to this. Now, this is a third-party plugin. It's only $50. It's called Shimmer from Valhalla. And it's a really, really cool plugin for creating ambience. Um, here's what this sounds like with the mix all the way down. So essentially a dry. And if I pull the mix up. So essentially, Shimmer is doing more of the sound di design than the actual software instrument is. So together with these two together, just creating this really cool ambient, um, high frequency sort of afterthought along with the piano. Okay, next up is the bass. For this, I've just got a retro synth uh, setting pulled up. It sounds like this. Nothing fancy. And then what I'm using is one of the step effects presets called Crowded Chamber. Because I want to use step effects to create some motion. And I'm also going to use the Tremolo plugin. And what I'm doing with the Tremolo plugin is I'm not using one of these other settings where it pans left and right. I'm using this setting called Mono Tremolo syncing it to an eighth note. And then pulling the, up the depth a bit just so it doesn't completely get ducked out. And then pulling the symmetry back a bit. And this is just gonna create sort of this moving bass line for me. And then I've added just a uh, channel EQ here just to scoop out a lot of the high end. It'll get rid of and soften a lot of those popping sounds. Now I could try adding the transposer to this and transposing down an octave. I really want some really low heavy bass, but it's all going to depend on what key you're in. I think it's okay uh, where I'm at right now. Okay, so that's the bass. So let's listen to all three of these together. Pretty cool. So let's go down to the last one here. This one says mini sync. This is an ES2 setting, and it just sounds like this. And I've actually, in reality, I've got the cutoff pulled down a bit more. And I've got the channel EQ on it just to scoop out some of the low and high end. And then I've got the stereo delay on it just to give it a, a repeating effect. So a bit of delay on there. So this track is actually going to be an arpeggiator. So what I'm doing is I'm actually layering both a chord trigger along with an arpeggiator. So if I don't have the chord trigger on, it's just going to sound like this with one note. It's just jumping up and down in octaves. And again, the goal here is to be able to play one note and trigger all four of these instruments. So if I wanted to have actual like, you know, triad arpeggios, I'd actually have to play a triad. So what I'm going to do is pull up a preset that I made called C minor triads. And what this does is on each note of the C minor scale, I've created a different triad, but still within that same octave range of C2 to C3. So now when I play those notes, I actually trigger uh, arpeggios. And then that along with the uh, stereo delay gives it some nice motion. So now all four of these together sound like this. So 
So the way that we're going to get all four of these to be triggered by one MIDI region, because um, right now we'd have to record the same MIDI region on all of these or record it on one of them and copy and paste it down. I want to treat all four of these like one instrument. So I'm going to select all four of them, go up to track, go to create track stack, and create a summing stack. And then I have one summing stack that I can arm and play all four at the same time. So let me just record in something here. So let me open this up here. And what I'll do is I'll set all the velocities to the same value, but just, just by holding option. And I'll also quantize all of these. It looks like the fastest rhythm I have is a quarter note. So there we go. And then just to make sure that there's no gaps between notes, I'll go over to edit, trim, and I'll use this uh, note to remove overlaps. That's one thing I'm gonna do is get rid of overlaps. And then second, go down to force legato here. And what that does is it gets rid of, the first one gets rid of any overlaps, the second one gets rid of any gaps. So now we have something that's perfectly quantized to the grid. And we're only playing one note at a time and we're getting all of those sounds together. So let's hear what this sounds like with a bit of a drum loop behind it. And there you go. So that's a cool trick I like to use to layer together multiple instruments with a summing stack and also take advantage of Logic's MIDI effects plugins to create chords and arpeggios and to make sound design easy and trigger all sorts of cool sounds with just one key press at a time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.